Today on Wood Turning, we're going to play around with transferring an inkjet image to wood. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. The way I came across putting inkjet printing onto wood was I was looking for a way to label these boxes that I'm making to ship some products to the next AAW Symposium. And so I wanted to have something on here to where I'd identify the box in case it got lost in shipping. Anyway, I just started playing around with this because I saw some videos on YouTube on how people used laser jets and then transfer paper and things like that. And then I stumbled across a few people doing inkjet, which is really cool. Uh, but yet still they were using some sort of like surface that they'd paint on first and they always did it on flat wood and I got why can't we do it on turning because we can make a turning with a flat surface so I made this little serving tray so we can put this into here and this doesn't even have a finish on it yet so it looks really good there's only a couple things you got to do use whatever image software you want to use and just get your image like that the only thing that you want to do to it is you want to transform it by flipping it backwards just like it's a mirror and so then you make your print sheet the way you want to make it and print it out so it's all backwards that looks good and the thing I reason I have four in there is because my printer puts little bitty lines on the paper and so I'm trying to find the best one that comes out of there but what am I printing on I am printing on good old-fashioned label paper and I buy this off Amazon and I'll put it down in the description of which one I buy and it is just standard two sheet labels and I ship a lot of stuff so that's why I have these and so we take the label off throw it away and we're gonna print on the shiny side here not the back side because what we're looking for is a surface that the ink won't dry and adhere to what we want is a surface that basically is gonna suspend all the ink on top of it so let me get this in here it wants to curl a little bit but we'll get that in there and so I'm using an Epson printer whatever inkjet printer you have should be fine the only thing you might have to watch out for is file print here uh, that different printers might not like this they might want to smear the ink so you'll have to test it on this it doesn't make any mess and it's all good for me so we're going to go ahead and print this out it's going to take a little bit and then we'll have our stumpy friend coming out of the printer here we go Okay, so it's printed it out. I want to be real careful not to touch it. And you can see a couple of the lines from the where the wheels hit. So what I want to do with this right now is just keep this here in my office while we go out to the shop and turn the serving tray before we take that out because I don't want to mess this up at all. I want to make my little serving tray out of ambrosia maple. So I have a two inch thick blank right here and I've gone ahead and drawn out about a nine inch circle on there. So what I want to do first is I want to go to the bandsaw and I'm going to cut this out and try to stay as close to the line as possible. Now once I've cut it out, I'm going to go to the drill press and drill a hole in here because I'm going to use a worm screw to hold this on the leg. Okay, let me get the camera in position. You can see my worm screw there. So I'm just going to tighten this up. It's a great way to hold wood on a lathe. I'm going to lock the headstock in with my robust lay the lock right there. I like locking the headstock because then you can get a nice spin on that. That's a neat feature to have. So, excuse me while I live move the camera now. And what we want to do is I want to start turning this shape in the wood. Now this is really difficult to do because this is in grain, side grain, in grain, side grain. So you have to take a really fine cut at the end to not tear out the grain at all. And I'm not that great at it. <clears throat> Once in a while I get lucky and it works. So we're going to raise this up a little bit. We're gonna rotate this to make sure nothing's hitting. And I'm gonna go up here for my bowl gouge. So I've got a half inch bowl gouge. I'm gonna turn this on really slow, really slow, and pick up the speed. This is a lot of feet per second whizzing around here. 
So I just want to go carefully with it. And we're just going to come in and clean up the edge first. I'm making contact with the tool and I'm moving my body as a unit and go straight across. Once I get a flat surface, then I'll start making the cove shape. And those shavings are hot on your thumb. I mean, they come off at some real speed. There's a lot of friction to it. So now I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to start going in a little bit at a time. And it's like a bead. Same thing for a cove. You sneak up on it. You don't want to do it all in one shot. Especially when you're playing with end grain because then you'll get a lot of tear out. And it'll be really tough to get that tear out. You can't sand it, that's for sure. You are so screwed at that point. So I want to come back over here and I'm going to go this way. I'm just going to rotate my body to make the cove this way. You could switch and go left-handed, which I am not as good at. <laughs> just prove that right off the bat. Never mind. We'll go back to this. So we'll come in here and just keep taking this away. And it's just a gentle shape. And what I want to do is make sure that once I've done this, I'm going to check my surface to see how it looks. And if I'm happy with that and don't have a lot of sanding left, we're good to go on, move on to the other end, the hollowing part of this piece. Oh no, not the hollowing. I got to move on to the bottom. We got to do the bottom first. Okay. Looks good. Well, I like the curve I've got on there. I want to put a curve on here now. This is the bottom, so we're just going to make it a dish shape. And you might go, whoa, Tim, how are you going to hold this to turn it around? Well, I'll show you that in a minute. And of course, uh, close your eyes, watch me lower that. Now we're really good. Okay. <laughs> I just want to come in and just do some nice passes here. And this is a lot easier than going in grain, believe me. It's a lot smoother cut. A lot easier to sand, too. If I just get my direction right, I won't be jumping off of this. There we go. I'm just leaning my body into the cut now. I was getting too yippy and I was turning and popping it off. But you want a nice sharp tool for this. And I always enjoy using Thompson tools because I don't have to sharpen them that often. You're always going to have to sharpen. But the more you can uh, limit how often you have to sharpen, the better it is. <laughs> and ambrosia maple is a hard maple, so this is a tough wood. Now I want to come, come across here and clean that up like so. So I have a nice flat edge. And now I'm going to start my dish in right here. And I just want this for a little bit of shape, right? There we go. That looks good. Now I'm just going to sand that up and we'll be ready to flip this around. Okay, so now we're ready to hollow out the inside, right? Well, hey, Mr. Tim, how are you going to hold that on the lathe? Well, we're going to use a thing called cold jaws. And they're really neat. They're these dinner plates that you put on here with little rubber bumpers and it's so neat because you can unscrew these and move these to whatever diameter piece you have so whoops watch out brian i didn't want to hit you with that ah, put that in there so i have to use a special uh what you call this allen wrench because it's so tall so i'm going to close this and then you can see right here as these rubber wheels come in they grab and isn't it amazing? They're almost the exact same shape as what I just made on the sides. <laughs> I'm smart. Yeah, actually, I've made something straight before and it doesn't work real well that way. So you do want a little curve on whatever you're holding to do this. That looks good and solid. So, okay, I'm gonna get my weapons of choice out and we'll start hollowing this out. When you use this thing, you wanna start slowly and build it up. And it's got this really cool whooshing sound. This is not the strongest of holds since it's made with rubber, right? So that's why you want to be careful. So I'm only going probably about 300 RPM here, but it sure sounds like a lot more. And we're just going to start hollowing this out like we would a bowl. Just a little bit at a time. So I'm just leaving little grooves here. 
and I'm gonna use these grooves in a minute to reset my tool when I come back. As long as you're pushing in, it's a safe cut. If you start trying to push out, then you're pushing against those little rubber things that are holding in place. So what I want to establish out here is roughly where the lip is going to be. And that feels about right. So I'm going to make one cleaning cut right here to get myself a good flat surface. And I want that surface to just go in just a little bit so we have a little grip with our thumb when we're holding this little serving tray. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna worry this down for a bit until I get rid of that hole that I made with the worm screw. Okay, now I'm to the point where I'm making the transition in here and I want a sharp corner. So I rest the bevel. I bring the tool in and I push. And I'm rotating it a bit. I'm actually watching over to my right to see the uh, relief I'm making there. And so now I'm just pulling it to blend it in. You can make this a sharp angle or go with a soft angle. I think I'm gonna go with a soft angle on this right now because the ambrosia maple, when you make that really hard angle, you get a little tear out in there, you can have a little bit of an issue. So I've got this about as flat as I can get it, but it's not perfect yet. And it's a lot to sand. So what I want to do is switch over to a different tool, and that's going to be a scraper. So I'm going to raise this up just a bit, and I'm going to grab my round nose scraper with a relief grind on there, so it's not going to be very aggressive. So we're going to put that in there, and that should make the bottom nice and smooth. Let's see if I'm at center height on that. That's going to be good. Start this up. Because you have to have it perfectly smooth to make that applique. When you take the uh, inkjet print and put it on there, if it's not perfectly smooth, the bumps and ridges will make the image look bad. So I can go left or right with this. And so I'll just take these little whispers of wood off until I'm perfectly flat. And then all we have to do is sand, and then we're on to putting the inkjet on. Oh, it's a lot of fun. It's getting windy, and I started feeling sprinkles of rain, so it was a little sketchy getting in here. <laughs> okay, so we made it through, and I want to show you on a couple pieces of wood here how we do this, so I'm going to cut this out very carefully. Remember, this is wet ink that's just laying there, and this has been laying there for probably about a, an hour now, maybe a little more, and so... It still retains its liquidity, I guess. So anyway, here's the thing. You wanna make sure that when you put this on here, you put it on with a purpose. So heavy pressure, right? We do not slide, we do not move anything now. So we rub it in with our fingers. And all we're doing is just giving the ink a chance to go across the wood and off this little piece of paper. Peel it off, there we go. <laughs> and it's interesting, because this is rough wood, right? So you see more of the wood grain in it and everything like that. What you don't really see are the lines that came off the printer. So I like that. The, the ink bleeds out a little bit and fills it out. So let's go for the good one here. I think I want this one right here because it does have the least lines. One thing you will get in trouble, like I said, if you don't put this on with intent, let me show you real quick. You do this, just kind of move it, you get a blur. So it will, it will give you trouble. Well, this is kind of neat. I'm going to get a collage out of that. <laughs> kind of get the idea. I'm not going to set this one on top of that. I'll set this on this really clean desktop here and cut this last one out. Okay, so here we go. I've got to make this small enough that it fits inside my little serving tray here I've made. Now I want to also orient this. I love this little look right here with the, uh, the ambrosia. So I want this to be in line with that. So this is going to take it a, make it a little more tricky. So that looks about right. Okay, with intent. And firmly press on everything. You're not really having to kill this. You're just really just running your finger across. Like you're gonna squeegee out bubbles when you're putting on a cell phone protector on your cell phone screen. 
So, I mean, that's pretty good. I'm just giving it a little time to soak into the wood. Because the wood's sanded now, it is harder for this to soak in. So you want to give it a little more time. But look at the difference now. Now it's drying, so it's a little wet still. That little splotchiness will go away. And once that goes away, it'll look like this one right here. And it'll smooth out. That's so cool. So anyway, what do you want to put on this for protection? I'll show you over here. On this, I did a test, and it, it's exactly what I thought it would be. This right here is uh, top coat satin Valspar that I put on there. Just some simple lacquer, right? On this one over here, this is hand rub polyurethane. You can see what happens at that point. It starts getting the black to bleed into everything, so it's not the best thing on earth. So you just want to take this, shake it up really well, <laughs> and uh, let's see. We'll use this. And, ah. That was easy. Okay. This won't pop out much, but it'll, it'll look good. But you can just spray this on here, and that'll protect it. And then you'll have a really cool inkjet transfer on turned wood. So until the next time on Wood Turning, keep turning and transferring. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.